this and that and that and that, and they take him to a place that is known. So that is a matter that I will take up and I will uh, deal with it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Otero, to Kodai, but to Liza Maswari, no, no, me, me, as a, when you Otero, so no, I'm over to Tafania, but for you to get a chance, uh, we okay. have, we'll take, three, we'll, take, <laughs> we'll take three people, three at a time faster. Uh, we have, uh, I'll bring in Alai, followed by Edith, followed by Gray, and then you can give Wakili after that four. So again, Hussein, I really don't think Alain should speak because his, his comments will be biased. This space is basically about what we are going through in the street. Alai doesn't know about it. In, in short, Alai, I really don't think Alai can speak for himself. We can't, we can't uh, limit anybody from speaking. Everybody has the freedom to speak here. No, Come no, away. Alai is very really bad. So, uh, thank you. Let's have uh, a Bring Mara, you can speak. But Alai, no, he has not been against this. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Otero, <laughs> I've, been, I've been an advocate of freedoms for a very long time, especially when we don't agree. So I'd ask you to learn that lesson that you should listen to people, especially when they don't agree with you. And that's what the president is trying to do here. We don't agree with him, and that's why we want him to listen to us and he agreed to come to the space. And moving forward, I, I, I really want to tell the president that, Mr. President, you know that your success is our success, and we really want you to succeed. The problem is that I don't know if you really want yourself to succeed as a president of Kenya. Because from the moment you got to be the president, there are things you did which I think just supported your presidency. When you decided to say that you are not going to listen to intern doctors, I said, does the president know what he's doing? Because he's touching the hearts of Kenyans. These are the people who spend most of their time in public hospitals. When the president didn't take up the matter of pending bills and tell the counties and the national government to pay the pending bills, you know that one is touching the middle class, the working class. And these are the people who mobilize their children called Gen Zs. And they came out and said, no. When you removed Linda Jami, when we interfered with Eduafia, when, when, when we saw your friends and very close associates working with bands of money, 10, 20 million in churches, Mr. President, I think you sabotaged your own presidency. And that's why I ask myself that the president really tells us that he wants, he, he means well for the country. But is he really meaning well for himself? Because unless somebody else is the president who is doing all these things, the, 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 the second and last question, because I don't want to spend more time, I'm an elected official in Nairobi, Mr. President, is the issue of uh, Nairobi own source revenue, which we have asked, we have investigated, we have been taken around, Mara, it was KRA, which is collecting that money, we have taken to the office of the president, uh, finally we are told that it's being collected in state house by some agency, we can't get, I'm the vice chairman of ICT in Nairobi City County Assembly. But nobody knows who is collecting the revenue for Nairobi City County, Mr. President. It really saddens me because if that revenue was collected in a transparent and verifiable manner, then you know, Mr. President, some of these bills would be taken up by the counties and it will not come to you in the national government so as to pay those bills, Mr. President. Those are the, those are the only questions which I had. Thank you. Thank you, Alai. Edith? Yeah, thank you for the chance to ask a question. Can you, Hello? Are you with us? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Okay, let's go to Gray if Edith is not responding. Hello, hello, hello. All right, thank you so much. Hello. Hussein. This is Grayson. Hussein, can you hear me? Otero Naniskia. I can I can hear Eddie and I can hear uh, uh, the other gentleman. I'd like to ask my all question right, I... if you can all hear. Okay, me. let's have one person speak. Uh, Gray, Gray, speak. All right, thank you so much, Hussein. Uh, Eddie, I'm sorry. Uh, so, Your Excellency, my name is Grace Onmaro. Uh, my question to you is one, and my question is on this very, very emotive and very, you know, uh, topic that we love talking about as a country, which is corruption. 
I know you are stand on corruption. You have spoken about it many times. You know, you don't condone corruption. You don't want corruption to happen in your government. But then I want to point out something. Uh, recently, there was a scandal, uh, you know, with the fertilizer and the CS was, you know, uh, impeached or a motion was tabled in the National Assembly by a member of parliament for him to be impeached. But what happened later is that, you know, the same, same members of parliament from your political party, the UDO party, went ahead and saved this particular cabinet secretary. What does that speak, you know, to your stand regarding corruption? Do you support corruption on one hand, but on the other hand, because he is your CS, these are your members of parliament, you know, they go ahead and, and you know, flop that motion that was supposed to impeach this particular uh, cabinet secretary. My last question, as a young person, there is a challenge of jobs in this country. But a month ago or so, in the dailies, there was a freeze that the public service is not hiring anymore. What are you trying to tell young people, yet you say each and every day you want to ensure that we give jobs to these young people who go to school but don't have jobs out here. People are, you know, forced to do things that they shouldn't be doing and they went through the education system. If I can get a response to those two issues, I'd really appreciate it. Thank you. Grayson, do, do, do I answer those or I thought we said we take three people. Can can we take maybe Eddie? Eddie was somewhere. There is a lady called Eddie was somewhere or something. Edith Kimani. Otero, from my end, I see she's a listener. Maybe you can add her to speak from what I'm able to see on my end. Okay. As we wait As we for... Wait for uh, 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 the uh, uh, can, can, can I proceed and answer? Proceed and answer? Yes, please. Thank you very much. Uh, Alai has mentioned uh, three things. Mr. Alai, I, I want to tell you, uh, Mishmiwa, that um, I am acutely clear that even if I don't succeed, I want Kenya to succeed. The one thing that I am very clear about is what do we do? We change the status of many Kenyans. Intern doctors. There was a long conversation with intern doctors. I made sure that they were attended to. We have, I met the leadership of the of the intern doctors myself, finally, and we did make an agreement on how to sort out the intern doctor situation, including I have factored in this budget with their concurrence when i agreed with them that we were supposed to set out to sort out sorry their um their arrears in three years i offered to sort them out in one year after i engaged uh, after i engaged with them and the money is in the budget as i talked to you i have even today uh, decided that even with a cut of uh, the finance bill i will still uh, make sure that uh, they, they, they are sorted out. The issue of pending bills. You know, uh, my good brother, we have pending, pending bills in the region of 650 billion. It is the reason why I appointed Mr. Ouko, our former Auditor General, to interrogate all the pending bills for purposes of making sure that we can pay them. In fact, one of the items that I, I listed this afternoon, which was also in the budget, is a provision for us to begin the journey to sort out pending bills because it is crippling businesses of people, it is destroying enterprises of Kenyans because government is not paying. The third thing that you have said about Linda, Linda Mama or Linda Jami and Eduardia, I have done three things. Maybe uh, the, the explanation. Let me give you that explanation. It's a cut of space. On, on Linda Mama. Yeah. Is, are you, are you, am, I, am I audible? Yes, you are, Mr. President. Sorry about that. 
what we are doing is under our universal health coverage, I promise the people of Kenya that we need to ensure that we don't leave other Kenyans behind. Under our universal health coverage, in which this, this, this year we now have a budget for it, we are going to scale up the benefits of Linda Mama. That is why we have brought it, we have scaled it up into universal health coverage. We want it to reach more Kenyans. That's number one. Number two, we want to enhance the benefits. The benefits were 2,500 for women giving birth in, uh, in, 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 uh, in hospital, in, in smaller hospitals, 5,000 and maximum of 17,000. We have now changed that. From 2,500, we have moved the benefit to 11,000. And we have moved the upper benefit to 32,000. That is not a derogation. That is an upgrading of Linda Mama. Number two, Edu Afia. What we are doing with Edu Afia is that we are universalizing. The uh, uh, universal health is universalizing insurance so that every Kenyan, and you know, I, I, I made this absolutely clear, and that is why we have changed the law so that not just the students, who are in school, but every Kenyan, who, even those who are not in school, will now be beneficiaries of, 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 uh, of, of our chief uh, social health. We, instead of having NHIF, we are now going to have social health insurance fund, which is going to cater for everybody to universalize access. So on both cases, uh, Mr. Alai, we are not derogating we are upgrading and making sure that uh, universal health is available to uh, many Kenyans. Finally, on uh, Nairobi, on source of revenue, I thought I had the governor say the other day that he had increased it, to, uh, he had raised more revenue than was ever raised. I'm not sure about that. But I want to tell you that that is a Nairobi County affair. You, Mr. Alai, should not be asking me. The public should be asking <laughs> you because you are the person. You are the person responsible. You are the, the representative of the people. You should answer that question. You should be the one to interrogate the county government. It is your responsibility of oversight. It is your responsibility of representation. It is your responsibility of legislation. You should legislate how the county resources are, uh, are raised. You should oversight the county government to collect it. I was just want you to take up your job and do it. Let me, as uh, Gray Marwa has asked me two very important questions. Marwa, these are very important questions about corruption. Let me say the following, just three things first. Number one, I said before that corruption must be dealt with firmly and decisively. And that is why my, my act number one in office. The two acts that I did in office when I came into office was number one, to make sure that I give financial autonomy to the police so that they can pursue corruption to the extent possible and that they don't have to come back to me and nobody in my office will control the police in as to who they want to prosecute. That's number one. And I signed and the budget of the police is rent by the IG at the moment, and they are free to go after everybody. That's number one. Number two, I made sure that the judges that had been denied the opportunity to serve and to empower our uh, judiciary, I signed them and I, and I, and I made sure that uh, they have been gazetted and they went to work. I did not stop there. I have enhanced the budget of the judiciary from 18 billion to this year, I wanted to be at 25 billion. Unfortunately, it may come down because of the finance bill by about a billion or so. Number three, I am the president who has sworn in the highest number of judges in two years in the history of Kenya. We have, I have sworn in maybe 46, almost 50 judges because I have agreed with the judiciary that justice delayed is justice denied. And therefore, 
I want to uh, make sure um, uh, that th that that becomes uh, the case. Number 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 four. On the specific incident of what happened with fertilizer, I want to tell you, as I tell the people of Kenya, those where evidence has been gathered, sufficient evidence has been gathered, they are in court. The CEO, the general manager, and seven other staff of the National Cereals and Produce Board are already in court. The minister was taken to parliament to answer for political responsibility that to make sure that he, he, his oversight role was in question. I want to tell you this, uh, Gray, that we are a country of the rule of law. When a person has been, uh, um, when, when allegations are made against a person and they are not verified, there is no way that such person and be held to account. But when they are verified, like the case of the officers who worked under the minister that were verified, they are in court. I want to tell you, if a minister, if a principal secretary, if there are verified allegations of corruption against any cabinet minister and or any principal secretary, the day they are taken to court, I will find them. I will not wait for the court process because there will be an element of confirmation that these are people who are corrupt. Let me talk about jobs. And you have said correctly that the public service has issued um, a circular that there will be, uh, there is a freeze on jobs. The public service has a freeze on jobs at different levels. People who are employed at entry level and the space around jobs is huge. Government can only hire a very small fraction. My intention, my plan, is to make sure that government facilitates the economy, facilitates the private sector, facilitates the entire enterprise space to create more jobs. It is the reason why I made a deliberate commitment to the people of Kenya when I went for the elections, and I said I will focus on creating jobs. And if you want me to explain to you the areas where I am focused on creating jobs, I will. If you want me to tell you how many jobs I have created in the two years that I have been in office, I will tell you from housing, from digital jobs, from uh, going to manufacturing, all the way to export of labor. I will tell you how many jobs I have, I have created and I have every intention to make sure that as many Kenyans as possible have an opportunity to have an income so that they can contribute meaningfully to the development of our country. I thank you. Chilling, you can speak. Uh, thank you, thank you very much for 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 this chance uh, to maybe ask some few questions to the uh, president. Uh, I'll be very brief. I only have three questions to make. One, uh, Mr. President, is that uh, like most of the people have said, is that your government is full of lies because of one uh, one. I want to put it clear that when uh, Finance Bill 2023 was passed. Um, we believe that the revenue that was going to be collected during that period were going to be used for development. Personally, I come from a Masab constituency. And on February of last year, the CS for Transport uh, Bonamur Komen came to Kabiet Shrines and promised us that there is a road down there that's going to down from Kurgung to Cheptelway coming down to Kapkatembu. He said personally that since that this is a road that was left midway by the contractor he was going to send the contractor in a record three months to be on site so that the road can continue uh, with the, the, so the contractor can start the, the construction up to now we still do, we still haven't seen that so that basically tells you that that is a liar number two uh, i think um the gray has talked about uh the issue of uh, fertilizer You've said, uh, Mr. President, that if, they, if you find that there is a case against the said minister, you're going to fire him. 
there's a case that has been filed by the Law Society of Kenya against the, the Minister of Agriculture. If kindly, we can tell the minister to step aside so that, uh, you know, trying to investigate someone who is in office becomes very hard. So let the minister step aside so that we can continue with the investigation. Number three, I would want to talk about the arrogance. The arrogance that is in your government. I, I have heard uh, Mr. President uh, say, you say that uh, the issue of uh, Finance Bill 2024 was, I think it was packaged in a way that maybe you should have done it better. Yes, you should have done it better. The reason being, the people you sent out there, since the, like the MP for Molo, on the issue of, uh, the, the, of, 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 of the motor vehicle levy, at some point in the TV, he told people that, you know, if you cannot be able to pay that, just leave your vehicle at home. That is the arrogance that was displayed. That was being displayed. The leader of majority in parliament, Kimani Shungwa, even went out on a podium, said that you know that these are the Gen Zs. They come with the phones, go to KFC, they go, and then they come with an Uber. That is the arrogance that that fueled all this anger that you're seeing in people. And then lastly, uh, on the issue of uh, I come from. Uh, you know, this generally this region of Wasingishu and maybe Nandi and Wasingishu, there was an issue of the Finland uh, scam that happened. There's a case in court. Parents paid for the money. The case is dragging in court. So actually, what you saw in Elred, I think it's more of, it's, it wasn't even more finance bill. It's, it's the anger that, that has been building up. It's been building up. So people were, were really ang angry because they've paid people sold their land the issues are still there nobody's uh, talking about we have a case that is in court it can drag to five years so what happens with the money that has been lost that someone was going to go to school tomorrow or ne by next year maybe they would have graduated so i think those are the issues that i have uh i want you to address in regards to uh, the areas that i have mentioned thank you Wakilisu Saroni can speak. Um, uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Your Excellency, for this opportunity to address you. And uh, thank you very much, the host, Hussein and uh, Osama. Um, my name is uh, Jesse Saruni, or rather Wakili Saruni. I am uh, the president of uh, University Students in Kenya, KUSO. And uh, Your Excellency, I have a few concerns, eh? but uh, first allow me to give you a background of uh, why, in my opinion, I feel comrades were very uh, disturbed about the finance bill. Uh, um, Your Excellency, if you look at the finance bill 2023-2024, it introduced housing levy at around uh, 3%, which was to be redeemable. However, d uh, during public participation, the people, uh, most of the people, including comrades, said that uh, we can start at 1.5 percent, but uh, without communication, the parliament went ahead and uh, reviewed and uh, let, made it to be 1.5 percent, but they removed the clause that allowed people to redeem the uh, the savings after they retire. Your Excellency, I would uh, wish to hear from you whether this it can be reverted so that this can be redeemable. But uh, as I continue, Your Excellency, I was uh, part of your team during the campaign, and uh, one of the things that we uh, we were saying during the campaign, because I act, act, actively campaigned using the Kenya Kwanzaa Manifesto was uh, the 30% of appointments of youth in different uh, uh, positions, and including a youth, youth advisor to the cabinet. However, Your Excellency, currently we have an advisor to the cabinet on uh, women affairs, but we do not have an advisor to the cabinet on youth affairs. I was concerned whether this was uh, deliberately left out, or uh, I was just a little bit concerned with that. Your Excellency, another key concern that uh, affects comrades, around 6,000 graduates went through diploma in law, and this is in regard to career progression. So they did their diploma in law, and uh, they proceeded to do their degree in law. Your Excellency, before 
2014, everyone who did their diploma and did their degree in law were able to proceed to the Kenya School of Law for the ATP uh, uh, Advocates Training Program. But uh, the laws were changed in 2014, and this affects around 6,000 university students who are working in uh, law firms and getting underpaid. And I am uh, happy to see that uh, the president of LSK, who is very passionate about uh, issues of youth, is also here. Uh, Your Excellency, there is an amendment bill in parliament that is on the speaker's desk and has stayed for so long. Your Excellency, this is something that is under the office of the Attorney General. And uh, with the indulgence of uh, the Attorney General, I believe this thing can be, uh, we can find a multi, uh, uh, an approach where this thing can be addressed, of course, through the office of the Attorney General, so that these comrades can stop their suffering. They are not able to proceed um, uh, to self-actualization because most of them would want to become advocates of the High Court, but they are not able due to that change in, uh, in the Act uh, of Parliament. Your Excellency, another concern is on students and youth leadership. Wakili, I really, I really hate to do this, but please, please, we've only gone through five questions. I think there are so many people on attack. Okay, one. just one more. Kindly, we agreed. With you. Yeah, please, kindly. Okay. Um, uh, you, 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 Your Excellency, in regards to university um, students and youth leadership, um, you can see that the, we have the National Youth Council, which uh, is uh, as constituted. It's supposed to hold elections. And uh, I feel, Your Excellency, the youth feel that uh, they have not been able for a, a long time to represent their grievances because they are not able to elect uh, their leaders directly. And this goes back even to the University Amendment Act, which introduced the delegate system, which I feel that uh, the universities have found a way to maneuver so that they elect, they make sure that the students who are elected are students who they uh, can uh, be able to maneuver and manipulate. Your Excellency, um, finally, on the issue of branding, uh, the projects that uh, our members of parliament and all other people has uh, the aspect of, uh, has the aspect of uh, when the projects are complete, people tend to brand their names on these uh, projects. Your Excellency, these projects are financed by uh, taxpayers, and it is the request of the young people and the youth that uh, when it comes to branding, we would rather have these projects branded that they have been financed by the Kenyan taxpayer. I will uh, leave it at that, Your Excellency, and uh, thank you very much. But of course, there is the issue of mental health. I appreciate we cannot exhaust all these things uh, in one sitting, but I'm looking forward uh, to more engagements in other platforms. Um, thank you very much, and I'll leave it at that. Thank you. The final question of the three ni ex councillor Good evening, everyone. You can hear me? Yes, yes, please go ahead. My first request to the host and the co-host, please do not give the elected uh, people the Exhaling. chance to speak, one of them a lie and me. You can hear me, Osama? Can we save yes, the time? Elect elected MPs, elected any elected official should not take this chance apart from the president. So thank you very much for the time. I have two things. More, I don't want to repeat a lot of things. I'm In the meantime, the I just have a pile of questions. Number one, Mr. President, see if what I could Number one, will you ask Ari Mamukaki or what to command? I want to ask you a question. freely. Last month, I'm going to all over the city. To go and ask you a question. You can ask me, can I go to the Kitambo? Last year, I was You just need answers about him. Thank you. Okay, he will answer. He will answer that plus plus. Uh, councillor, councillor, finish, please. Thank you. Yeah, my question is to the president. Why is it that the things you're asking about today are not new things? They are things you did promise in your campaign, and the other time you are being played of videos of you saying the same thing. You had to find a way of not listening to those videos. The one thing that you promised us, one of them, is corruption. You have people around you. You've addressed this one. It's kind of, you can't tell me out of the 100 people you have around you, 90% are corrupt or have story of corruption and you are doing nothing about them. I have, I'm a medic by profession and the issue of uh, NHIF, which is moving now to shift. I read a list the last two days of bill of millions, 300 millions, another 900 million today. 
disappearing to wrong or fake claims. I'm wondering if the change from uh, NHF to SHIF, will it improve or just another way to get more money for people around your circle to buy houses, buy big cars and laugh at us? Now, Mr. President. Ex in the Councillor, you're here. To those, are, those are about two questions. Now let's let's have the president answer. We don't have a lot of time. We have not wingy. They need to ask questions. The president, please let the president respond to that. If we get a chance, another chance with Olizio Swali Thank you very much. Uh, uh, thank you very much, good people. Uh, let me start with uh, the gentleman. I didn't get his name from Osop. And that gentleman says um, uh, we have uh, too many lies flying all over the place. Let me let me just state. Let me just put it uh, clearly. So many people have spread this story about William Ruto not telling the truth or uh, making uh, fake promises. I made a commitment to the people of Kenya that there will be a hustler fund. Today there is a hustler fund that takes care of two million Kenyans. I made a commitment to the people of Kenya that fertilizer is going to come down. It has come down from 7,000 to 2,500. I made a commitment to the people of Kenya that we will have a housing program. Today, 103,000 houses are being built with 160,000 young people, real people, engineers, architects, uh, quality surveyors, plumbers, you know, uh, technicians working. I made a commitment to the people of Kenya that we are going to sort out matters in the education sector. Today, we have hired the highest number of teachers in Kenyan history in one time, 56,000 teachers. I made a commitment that I am going to sort out the mess that was in our universities. Today, ask any vice chancellor with our new funding model, we have sorted out the challenge that was there in our universities. Today, lecturers are being paid. No university today is about to close down. When I came into office, most universities were teetering on being closed because of debts. I made a commitment to the people of Kenya that I am going to implement universal health coverage. Today, as I talk to you, we have 100,000 community health promoters in every village in Kenya that I pay, that I have equipped to begin the journey towards universal health coverage. As I talk to you today, there are four pieces of legislation that we have implemented, that we have, uh, we have enacted to actualize universal health coverage. I can go on, I can go on, and I can tell you, I, every commitment that I made I said I am going to appoint the judges that were not there. I did. I said I'm going to operationalize uh, the fund for the police, independent police. I did. I said I am going to do to enhance the budget of the judiciary. I did. You know, when people want to conveniently say a few things that propagate a, a, a certain narrative, it is easy. But let me that, let me leave that there. Let me um, go back to uh, your um, the Mosop Kurgum uh, story. I want to tell you, my good brother, we have old roads in Kenya. In fact, the budget, the debt we have on roads is 910 billion. Because we rolled out a program that we didn't have money to do. It is what is troubling me now. It is why I am, I, many people are asking me, why are you outside the country? I went to China, for example, and I got 40 billion shillings to do at least eight roads that were stalled. I have uh, come back from the US and we have had a consultation and we, we are getting money to be able to roll out some of our roads, courtesy of uh, 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 concessional funding, from the World Bank. I have had conversations with the president of, uh, of, uh, of, of Germany, and they are giving us uh, money under the same program to be, for us to be able to meet some of our programs. I want to tell uh, my good friend from Osop that 
we have focused on these areas. These roads did not stall yesterday. These roads have stalled for a while. We are figuring out how to make sure that we deal with that situation. And my apologies that maybe uh, the minister did not keep his word. And uh, I'm going to remind him. Let me do the following on fertilizer. I want to agree with you on this subject of fertilizer first. Let me say this. Fertilizer has made a very big difference in Kenya. Because of our program on fertilizer, we have managed to increase our food productivity. For example, on maize alone, from 44 million bags to 67 million bags last year. We, today, this year, we are going to pay the highest bonus ever in Kenyan history for our tea. In fact, our tea production, because of the support we gave ATDA, has increased from last year, it was 180 billion shillings that we collected from our tea. This year, it's going up to 210 billion. On coffee, the average payment of coffee last year was in the region of 70, 80. As I talk to you now, because we supported our, our, our tea farmers, the average payment for our, our coffee is in the region of between 100, 120, in some very good cases, 129 shillings per kilo. The whole array of what we have done with fertilizer is phenomenal. And therefore, I understand when somebody like my friend from Morsop gets annoyed, when there are people who want to sabotage a program that is making a very big difference in Kenya. And that is the reason why I didn't delay one minute when this issue of uh, fake fertilizer came into, 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 into the public. All the officials that were involved in it at the National Cereals and Produce Board were charged. When the minister is finally, when there is evidence gathered enough for the minister mm. to be uh, held to account, I want to promise you that I will fire him and any other minister for that matter if there is uh, sufficient uh, evidence to, to, to hold um, anybody accountable. Arrogance. I agree with you that not everybody understands communication. Let me tell you, uh, my good friend from Mosop, the day you become a public speaker, you will know how easy it is to make a mistake in the public. Sometimes you say things that you did not mean, but it comes out very badly. So uh, uh, whether it is the member of parliament for Molo, the member for parliament for Molo is a young man. I can tell you that young man is doing his very best. In fact, when I made him the chair of finance committee, many people told me he was too young. I shouldn't have made him. But I wanted to test also young people. And I wanted to mentor young people. And I want to say, he has made mistakes. But I want to tell you, that young man is bright. He has a bright future. He made mistakes. I will apologize for him. Maybe he, he said what he shouldn't have said. But they are among the young people I am mentoring so that they can become leaders tomorrow. Same case with uh, my, my friend Kimani Ishumwa. In fact, after he made that statement in, uh, I think it was uh, maybe in Baringo or somewhere, I called him. I told him, look, this is not how to engage the public. If you follow the next, the next day, he had managed to correct his statement and he had done, you know, an about turn of some sort. Because let me tell you, uh, my good friend from Osop, I have also one duty as a leader in Kenya. I have a duty to mentor other leaders. They will make mistakes. They will demonstrate, you know, maybe some arrogance, maybe either inadvertently or, or, or in whatever manner. But uh, partly, you know, it's because of inexperience, partly because uh, of uh, not a fair understanding of things. But I, I, I sometimes will want to take responsibility because these are members of my team and I will correct them. Let me also say about uh, what you said about uh, the Finland story in Eldoret. It is really unfortunate that people sold property, land, you know, uh, livestock for their children to go to Finland. You know, I, I wish I could go to court and tell the court to jail these people. Unfortunately, there is something called rule of law. 
there's something called due process. If these people had not been arrested, if nothing had not been done about it, then I would think I would think that there would be a matter. But these are people who have been arre arrested. They are, as I talked to you, presently in court. They are being taken through due process. And I am very confident that if they are guilty, the law is going to deal with them. Let me go to Saruni, uh, Akili. Um, you, you said about uh, the 1.5. It is true. There was a proposal of 3%. The public told us that we do not want a levy. If you want, collect a tax. Reduce it to 1.5. So both reduction to 1.5 and changing to attack was actually coming from public participation. This is what the public said. If the public are going to make a different uh, suggestion going forward, we will respect what the public uh, will have said going into uh, the future. Am I still uh, audible? Are you, are you there? Yes, yes. Yes, okay. yes, yes, let yes, me yes, let yes. me let me let me let me say this. Um, I agree with you, uh, my friend. That um, uh, I, I said that I would have an advisor in my office for young people, but maybe uh, I did something different. I gave many young people. If you go to Parliament, if you look at the leader of Senate, if you look at the leader of many committees in Parliament. I made young, young people. If you look at my deputy controller of, of, of state house, these are young people. I decided to have more cabinet, sec more principal secretaries. If you look at the profile of my principal secretaries, you have people in their thirties, many of them serving sub in substantive positions. In fact, many people were asking me um, whether these girls, you know, some of them look like they are, uh, or these boys, whether they can be principal secretaries. And I am very proud of them. They are doing a wonderful job. But that is something I will consider, Saruni, that uh, as a way of keeping a promise, I think that is something I need to consider. And thank you very much for your feedback. Let me also say on the matter of uh, um, the, the law that is uh, bringing problems to 6,000 diploma uh, law students who, uh, because of a law in 2014, I will take it up with the AG. Ordinarily, you know, professional organizations like, uh, like the legal fraternity are normally regulated by professional bodies like the LSK and all the others. If we get a recommendation from the LSK to the Attorney General, I will be able to facilitate and make sure that we don't is, uh, enfranchise 6,000 people in Kenya who have undergone training and who need to practice law in the way they want to do. I agree with you that uh, there has been a problem of, with the Kenya Youth Council. We need to deal with it. And I have told uh, Ababu Namwamba, my minister for uh, young people, to look at whether we have the right forum. You know, the problem with the uh, Youth Council, it has always looked like it is a government agent. We want to make sure that it doesn't look like a government corporation or a government agency. We want it to be a young people's organization in a way that government influence and government um, uh, intervention is limited so that the young people can speak for themselves. I would welcome ideas, uh, Saruni, from university leadership on how we can make the Youth Council better, more democratic, and more representative of, uh, of the young people. I couldn't agree with you more on this branding issue. I see faces of people all over the place on government projects that have been done. Uh, this, uh, and, and, I, and, I, and I think it is made to look like they did it with their own money. I agree with you that this branding, if it costs public money, it should stop. And it is feedback that I am going to take in to see to it that no public money is used to paint people's uh, uh, photo on government project. Um, let me answer ex-counselor. I'm told he's ex-counselor, but he's also a doctor. This is good. I didn't know that uh, an ex, uh, an ex counselor, a doctor can be an ex-counselor, but that is good. He has asked me about um, 
the NHIF and the transition to shift. Let me tell my brother, uh, I didn't get his name, that the reason why we are shifting from NHIF to shift is because NHIF is limited. NHIF only uh, captures a small section of our society. It is my intention, as I made a commitment to the public, that every Kenyan must have two things, must have access to healthcare and must have access to health insurance. We must make sure that those people, even those who cannot afford NHIF, because there are many people who cannot, who cannot afford the 500 we are paying at the moment. And that is why we have brought in a means testing system so that the people who cannot afford the, the 500, we have now reduced it to 300 under the new program. And even those who cannot afford the 300, the government of Kenya is going to pay for them so that no Kenyan will go to hospital, whether they are suffering from hypertension or cancer or diabetes or whatever. Either they get uh, treatment because uh, level one, two, and uh, three are free, or they can go to a referral hospital and there is an insurance system. Blue shift, that is that's a social insurance that is going to make sure that uh, uh, their bills are paid. So, and let me tell you, one very important addition to this program is the digital health platform. The biggest problem we have had in NHIF is the digitization process. We lose a lot of money because of collusion between hospitals and staff at NHIF. In fact, you saw in the public media that there are hospitals that have more accountants than medical officers because they are gaming the, 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 the system. We have now standardized all tariffs. There is no way you can be treated by malaria in one hospital and you pay a thousand and treated for malaria in another hospital and pay 100. We have standardized, whether it is public, whether it is private hospital, we have now standardized treatment. That is what happens world over in countries that, uh, that, that, that understand how to manage uh, mother's, mother's health. So this is a comprehensive program. It is one program that will change the face of Kenya. Kenyans will no longer have to sell their land, sell their property to go and pay for hospital bills. We will all of us stop these harambes and the public collections that we are collecting to go and deal with people. So my good friend, this is the plan. We have gone through it with parliament. We have enacted four pieces of legislation. It was my plan to launch it on the first of this month. Unfortunately, because of the challenges we've gone through with the finance bill, we have shifted it to begin first of October, but the process of registration has already started. I think we are on day, uh, on day four, and already over 100,000 Kenyans have been registered. So, and I want to encourage all Kenyans to register so that we can be able to plan for our health together as the people of Kenya. And we can even plan for our health commodities, and we can be able to uh, secure everybody from matters illness. Thank you very much. Um, not finish my questions. So as I continue, I uh, know, but my main point was corruption, whether it's an HF or shift. I, I told you, uh, 300 million paid to fake claims, around 9, 9 million today, early in the morning. This Will this stop in the new system? Is that since you came into power now two years ago, the only thing you keep mentioning is the price of Unga going down and the housing project, which we do know very well, will not be occupied with the common monetia uh, uh, like me. So do we have another project that you can always tell us? The things you promise a lot of things from police killings, yeah. that things are happening. Which one are you going to address other than the two of price of Unga and uh, housing? Now, 
in the in the police thing, there's somebody as Osama has told you, you have not addressed Osama was asking. There's a police that killed somebody, is believed to have killed the first uh, Rex, the first death of the protests. Still roaming. Yesterday, the other day was seen in a video shooting directly to a crowd. I didn't see the end of the bullets. I cannot tell the crowd to a wall. What is happening to this? When are these people getting arrested? Why is the, what is the CI doing about them? Why is it that the, the nobodies are getting arrested, arraigned in court in, no, in very few days? But then the big the big boys are just sitting somewhere eating the my, our, our taxes. What are you doing about them? What is the, what is your direction to address this issue? Thank you. So and also if you, if you notice that if you notice something in the pattern, there are the last mandamano, the, the recent one that was full of goons. How come in the first four, first four there were no this violence, but then there is the last one with coffin in town and police entertaining, police entertaining these people dropping. Uh, the coffee from the lorry, as well as seen parking them back in the lorry in the evening. It's clear that somebody was behind this and the police could not touch the very people that were doing this. But when it was another person with a phone and a bottle of water, they get shot, they get tear gassed. What is happening? What are you, why do you speak A and do C? What instruction are you giving to the police? Yesterday I saw that you were praising the police for having done a good job professionally. Well, people died. What, what are we praising here? What can are we, are we looking at? So can we just match the word with the action? We've been talking too much. We see you on TV every day. We, we now we're on space. When when are we getting to see action? Let me give space for other people. Thank you. Also, the, Mr. President, have you tried to reach the families of those who were shot dead by the police or injured by the police? Even a single one. Have you tried to reach even even the amount of them? Thank you very much. Uh, let me just uh, speak to two of the things that you have. Yes, I have tried to reach out uh, to Kennedy Onyango's mother, Jessica Onyango. And in fact, I am scheduled to uh, uh, engage with them. I have already sent a message and uh, they were not available, uh, but they know that I have been uh, looking for them and uh, they, they, I will be spoke, speaking to them shortly. On the matter of this rogue police officer that you say is roaming, that is something that I would get. I would want to get exact details of who this is, and I can tell you that we will apprehend him and deal with him in accordance with the law. But let me answer also we'll with what you, my friend. We'll send you video pictures. Pardon. Pardon. If you're having a difficult locating the, the the police, we have videos and pictures of them. Okay. So please, that should be easy. Please forward uh, the picture and uh, and 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 uh, photos to me to Hussein, my uh, spokesman here, and also I would appreciate if you can send send it to also my inbox if you if you can, or if you can send it to uh, the uh, Independent Police Oversight Authority, we will we will deal with it. But let me also respond to you about matters corruption. I want to promise you that part of the pushback we had on implementing our universal health coverage is because of corruption. Very many corrupt people who are gaming NHIF were against what we were doing. That is why they went to every court available trying to sabotage this program because they know that they will be out of business once we roll out this program because there will be, there will be no room for them to hide. It is also the reason why, my good friend, I am digitizing government services because I want to reduce the interaction between Kenyans and officers who sometimes ask for or bribes left, right, and center. I want Kenyans to access public service from the comfort of their offices or their phones or their homes. But let me speak to uh, the subject of uh, corruption in that matter. Number one, we will operate a digital system through and through, whether it is with KEMSA, we are digitizing KEMSA, we are digitizing commodity uh, uh, distribution, we are digitizing um, matters to do with the, the, the whole, all health hospitals. In fact, the program that is going on now, we have grouped hospitals into PCNs, where we are grouping a number of hospitals into one PCN in every sub-county so that we can identify where these uh, where, where these hospitals are, and we are working uh, with the counties. 
I know you have said that the only thing I talk about is hunger and housing. Let me also tell you, uh, the whole housing plan is not just about houses, my brother. It is about real people, real jobs. Jobs in our industries that manufacture cement, jobs in our industries that manufacture uh, steel, jobs in our industries that manufacture clinker, jobs, uh, engineers, architects, accountants, HR managers, and many people who are working in that ecosystem. And beyond that, let me also tell you, my manifesto is a five-year manifesto. What, you are do, you, you, uh, what I am doing now is a cut. There will be an exam in five years. And, and I will tell you, when I do the exam in five years, you will, you, you will see the results. Number two, beyond what I am doing on, uh, on, 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 on the space of jobs around housing, we are all, I am actively doing a big program on digital jobs. I was in Ruiru the other day, launching with CCI, a digital hub that is, going to, that is hiring, as I talk to you today, 5,000 Kenyans in Ruiru. I challenge you, you can go to Ruiru tomorrow, to CCI, you will find them working. And they are not the only ones. We have 140,000 Kenyans today who are working in different parts of Kenya, in TVETs, in ICT hubs, who are not working before I came to office. Today they are working because I have a very clear plan on digital jobs. When I talked in my manifesto about digital superhighway, it was not a, a, a write-up. It was not an essay. It was something that I intended to implement. As I talked to you, we are rolling out fiber optic using our power lines across Kenya. And in this year's budget, I had set uh, money to work with the, with, the, with the constituencies, with members of parliament, to make sure that there is an ICT hub in every ward in Kenya, where young people in ordinary places in every ward can have access to the internet, to, the, to, to computers, and to make sure that uh, these young people are trained and they can have access to a digital platform where they can work. As I talk to you, listen to me carefully, 149 to be exact, thousand young people who you can contact today are monetizing their talent on the digital platform, working under the program that I have set up. So it is not just housing, it is not uh, digital jobs only. Let me also tell you, today, because of the program that I have rolled out on matters to do with export of our labor. As I talked to you last year, 120,000 Kenyans went to work abroad in different countries. Part of, I've had uh, a good sister there say, what is the president doing in Germany? What was the president doing in, uh, in, 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 uh, in America? I want to explain to her uh, simply, what was the president doing in France? We are signing 19 new bilateral labor agreement. That will give an opportunity for Kenyans who want to work abroad, an opportunity to export their talent. I'm talking about engineers. I'm talking about accountants. I'm talking about HR managers. I'm talking about workers in different fields who want to go abroad. And I have now began the process of professionalizing over the last two years, that whole ecosystem of uh, labor and, and the export of, uh, of labor out of Kenya. That is why we are seeing an increment, not just in jobs, domestic workers, I don't know, uh, drivers, I don't know what. We are, the, the reason why we are negotiating new bilateral agreements is that we want to go beyond those workers at that level. We want to export skilled labor, we want to export professionals, and we are creating the ecosystem for that to happen.
In fact, if I tell you now, if you go to www.neaims.go.ke, you will see that there are 400,000 jobs on that platform. Different kind of jobs from different countries. We are now trying to make sure that those jobs will not be 400,000, they will be a million, and they will, in, they will be largely, as we conclude these bilateral agreements, bilateral labor agreements, they will include many professional jobs, many skilled jobs. And I want to challenge uh, the, the young people listening to me on this, uh, on this X forum, that that is an opportunity. You can go to eCitizens today and check whether what I am telling you is true or not, whether those jobs exist or they don't. And I want to challenge everybody to go to that space because that is one of our strategies. In fact, I saw on a Friday when there was a demonstration, one gentleman from my village was interviewed and he said, you know, the president has, not, has, has, has failed us because uh, there are no many jobs in Kenya. Uh, the problem is that we are uh, so many people are still going abroad to look for jobs. Little did that guy know from my village that I am the one who facilitated those who have gone abroad. It is part of my strategy to create opportunities. Let me finish by saying, in this year's budget, the whole trajectory was about manufacturing. You know, how do you create local jobs, my friend? You, 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 you the, the days when we just used to say, oh, we are going to grow the economy and the economy is going to create jobs, that is gone. We have to be deliberate. Housing, I know how many jobs I'm going to create in housing. Digital jobs, I know how many jobs I'm going to create. Export of labor, I know how many jobs I'm going to create. Now, what I had done in this year's budget is to put um, a mechanism where we promote our own manufacturing local manufacturing using local materials hiring local uh, uh, labor and local professionals and creating local wealth there is absolutely no re how there is no absolutely no way we are going to grow jobs in kenya by co making kenya a supermarket for other countries by making kenya an importer of everything Can't hear you. Oh, you done. He's done. Um, only... Okay. Another, another one last question. One last question before I give somebody the mic. I have. Uh, I have. I'm seeing several questions coming flowing to me. It's also mine. Uh, there's a. I made to understand there's a bill on your table about the IBC IBC reconstruction. I'm wondering how long should this be, or rather, question would be. Was it a deliberate not to assign the bill so that when your people, the people that are guiding you, people that cannot listen to us, when you want to try to send them home, we cannot because there's no IBC commission that's in place. So what is about IBC? Because uh, personally, I come from Nyanza, so, and my home MP is at Andy, but if I was coming from Nairobi or somewhere and surrounding, the MPs that really, really need to go home and the law that there is no IBC to be able to do this. Because parliament, they have been arrogant, parliament just, playing catch on parliament the... just that uh, passed the bill. It has found its way to my office. And I want to tell you, I will be expeditious. It will not go beyond Tuesday, and the bill will be signed and uh, gazetted so that we can proceed with the process. I am just keeping it within the law. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, thank you, Mr. President. I think we can get another. I, I'm having issues with my phone. I don't know why. I mean, if I need a key to. So let's. Hi, guys. Uh, can, you, can you hear me? Osama, can you hear me? 
Yes, yes, we can hear you, Mila. So, uh, mine is not, guys have said all the things that guys would have to say. Uh, mine is, uh, Mr. President, probably, I think I should address you as Baba Charlene. Probably you will get where I'm coming from. And, and can I have this, your name, if you don't mind? Do you, do you mind saying your name? But you, if you don't want, it's okay. My name is Mila. Mila, okay, Mila. So, uh, on the day, on the eve of the guys who are protesting to the parliament, I'm a photographer and that's what I do. And the guy who was shot, he was shot right in front of me. And it's something that has been living with me in my head since that day. And it really pisses me off. Like, I'm really pissed off. Like, the, the day you, you addressed the nation on that Tuesday, no one was remorseful. Like, like there was no, like, it's like, I don't know. It's just like, life, life doesn't matter to you guys in the government. Okay, I'll give you that later. You came and apologized, but still, people in your government walk to TV stations. It's like life don't matter, and that thing it, it has been disturbing me because I saw the boy being killed. Even if you go back, you can go check Larry Mador videos. He traced how the boy was. He was carrying nothing, like literally, he was carrying nothing. I know you've spoken about this over and over, but my question is. And it's not even a question. Mine is probably just go back and reflect. You are a father. You are a granddad. How would someone feel when the child is dead? I bet from where I, from where I stand, none of your government officials have even visited the families or reached out to the families from where I stand. Probably you guys just go back and reflect. Do we really matter as people who elected you? Like, how? where do we stand? Where do we stand as... As, as young youth, like the guy called Rex, he was a, he was a guy, basically, he was a guy who was born in 2002. Now he's dead. How does the mother feel? And some of, of your officials walk in TV stations, go on social media, and they're like, and that someone, someone was fucking, someone died. It's painful, Mr. President. It's re and the, I'm talking this because I saw the boy dead. I even have the videos. When the boy was shot all i'm asking is let's have empathy someone's just reaching out huh? and and to the families that's all i'm saying guys go back and reflect and just have empathy and then this thing of guys could be the kifua it it doesn't make sense someone like nyamu like why is he even there that's all i have to say Naskia. Hello. Sorry, sorry we lost Naskia. you, my friend. Uh, sorry. Yeah, I think we lost you. You can I speak? Sorry, good people. I don't know whether, whether we are, are we still online. I don't know whether are we there. Yes, we are online. Yes, I can, can hear you. Can we go on?
I'm sorry, I can't hear. I can't yes, hear anything. I don't know whether. Are we on? Yes. Yes, we are on. I think there's, no, there's nobody asking questions. Perhaps I ask as we get out on the board. Maybe I'm talking too much or asking too much. Forgive me for that, but nobody's speaking. Another question is not another question. That I've seen. Uh, I've seen people saying or asking you rather to don't reshuffle uh, the cabinets or the CS moving from the one ministry to the other. You've seen that one before. What you are seeing is just transferring competence in one field to another department or another ministry. Please get new faces. You have a lot of people around you. You have a brains behind you. When I was growing up, when I was young, in the time of Kibaki, I used, I used to associate being a minister with some, some smart people. And you are one of those, one of those people do, uh, in, in your squad back then. Suddenly, this day, you have people, the best they can deliver is just abuses and too much, too mouthy. Can you just bring us new people that are going to work? As, as recent as yesterday or two days ago, one of your kids came out to tell us that uh, the money we've been contributing for the injured and the, those we lost in, in this struggle <coughs> was waived by Kenya, Kenya National Hospital and other public hospitals. She came late. The person that was in charge has been doing an excellent job, Hanifa keeps everything better than the government every day can spend telling us abc has done by that give us transparency not the other people that just keep trying to okay let me uh, mila made a very uh, passionate and i think uh, correct uh, analysis of what happened especially of uh, 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 Kennedy, who who died in in Rongai, and I, and I and I believe that uh, he is right. You know that that's really a very regrettable situation. And 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 I apologize on behalf of every official who should have uh, done something about that situation. I have explained that the boy who died in Rongai was actually shot by one of the criminals who actually snatched the gun from the police. Uh, that criminal was, however, shot by the police because if the police did not shoot him, then he would have caused more deaths of more, of more Kenyans because these are reckless people. Sometimes some of, the, uh, of, the, of, the, of, of those people don't, are not even in their, in their correct uh, level of uh, census. And, and therefore, uh, it, it is regrettable. And uh, I agree with you. It is really unfortunate that you watched an incident that's going possibly to affect your life for a long time. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, and I know you have made reference to me as a father, which is true. I have four Gen Zs in my home. And uh, I, I promise you, they, they take me to task you know, on, on some of these things. And I have to do a lot of explaining some of the time. And that's just the same way I'm explaining uh, to you guys here. I agree that some of our officials are, are arrogant. Some of them, you know, speak out of turn. And then some of them display, you know, obnoxious opulence, if I may say that, uh, which, which does not just anger the public. Sometimes I call in some of those people and I give them a piece of my mind because uh, even Nyamu, I have had occasion to sit her down, you know, and, and, and tell her, I mean, you, you, she needs to change what, what she's doing. And, and uh, you know, when you are uh, uh, in my position, you are also a father figure. You know, some of these uh, young people, they... They get excited about many things, and, and sometimes they do they do the wrong the wrong things. And, and I want to tell you that um, I know somebody here mentioned Karen Yamu. Karen Yamu is a a, a, a girl I have had I've, I've had to sit her down sometimes and and tell her, look, she needs to do things differently. Um. Uh, so so I I agree with you that, uh, and, but I have also undertaken. You know, I, I have said, um, I know what is cutting. Uh, I know what's going on. And I have promised that uh, uh, I will be making changes. 
I know you have said that I should uh, I should not make changes. I I should clean the slate uh, clean. But uh, you see, you don't have the job I have, and and there are many things that I have to do to be able to get things done. And uh, uh, it, it's not it 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 it's quite a, it's quite something. But I I have had you, and I have had the many Kenyans who have who have talked on this uh, platform, and I'm very happy that uh, we are having this conversation on X. So let me, uh, I don't know, because um, I had promised that I would be here up to five. I think it is now five, uh, <laughs> five, five fifteen. And uh, I have another assignment uh, with our Olympics team that are coming to you. We have a, I have a, a, a bunch of wonderful uh, Kenyans who are going uh, to represent us in Paris. They are sitting somewhere outside my office. Uh, and um, with, with a lot of respect, I want to say to all the people who have asked me uh, the very important questions very Mr. President, questions. I have a final remark before you go. I have a final remark before you go. Is Kiyoti speaking here? Okay. Okay, Mr. President, before you, you continue, I'm Marvin Mabonga. I come from Kimilili constituency in Bungoma County. So, Mr. President, before you go, I want, you, I want to let you know that in your cabinet, currently we are having so many incompetent cabinet secretaries for instance, let me give you an example of your friend, Kipchumba Murkomen. Kipchumba Murkomen did law. He has never been in any law firm in this country. He has never won any case. But currently, he's heading the Ministry for Road and Transport. My question is, between, like, where, where is the, 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 the conjunction between the Ministry of Transport and a lawyer? In that department, you will be putting there a person who has done even civil engineering, who knows so much about construction. Lastly, uh, the, 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 the minister for, for agriculture, that person, he even doesn't have a bachelor's. We all know this information. We have the, 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 the government's website and we Google, we see this information. So, Mr. President, if you are going to give us those people who are incompetent, we need to make sure then we are totally doomed. Farmers, you know, when we elected you as the president, the normally they this say, you sent a thief to catch a thief. It is not but this time round, when we elected you, Mr. President, that you can help us now catch those people who are corrupt in this I'm nation, you just that. there laughing with them. Um, look at, look at uh, Oscar Sudi. He's floundering with 20 million in a bag in a public uh, forum. I'm even told that there is one of the uh, cabinet minister who was caught in Dubai with 20 million cash and you, 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 you actually came through him so he wasn't uh, taken to a court somewhere or, or arrested. You know that, Mr. President. Personally, where I sit, I want to pay my rent by 10th. But because I finished campus, I don't have any job anywhere. I'm just here in the city seated. I will, be, I will not be able to pay that rent because you promised her to give us the jobs. But when we elected you, you are now telling us that in the next one year, we are not going to, to employ the youth. Mr. President, do you think that one is not a lie? Lastly, the other day you said, uh, when you were questioned about the boy who was shot, you, you, you didn't know whether he was alive or dead. But now you know that the person who shot that boy is not the police officer. Mr. President, do you think that is a reality? That one is not a reality. I'm very angry because I'm very angered person because every time we get to those public offices, we are treated like trash. And that's why the other day I was even on the forefront. You can watch the videos. I was on the forefront in, in those protests to demand for my right. And now here, Mr. President, you are just taking us through the corners, the corners. You are not even going straight to the point. Kindly go straight to the point when you are asked 
uh, about the person who is corrupt, you say this person is corrupt, he has been working with millions of money. Uh, tell us uh, Omanga uh, bought, uh, bought 60 uh, with, with 50 million uh, a, a vehicle which he is floating now on social media. Apart from that, tell us that this uh, fertilizer was fake, even as much as it was dropped from 7,000 to 2,000, it is full of soil. So wh why, are we, why are we playing games with the public money, with the money that our, our mothers and fathers are going through sweat to get it, Mr. President? Wherever we are, we are not happy. And of course, if these things are going to happen this way, then come 2027, we are going to come out in large numbers, Mr. President. We'll take votes, and we'll take those people home, including you. If at all, you're not going to fight for our own rights as you are, <laughs> your people uh, in this nation. Thank you so much. I'm very angered, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, my friend, uh, Martin. I, I understand your anger, and uh, you, you are...